Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to discuss how to get external images and other assets into your plugins and audio apps. So this is a pretty simple tutorial, but there are a few key things that you need to know that are not the most obvious things when you're trying to do this. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. As you can see, we have our sampler plugin, and now I've just put my audio programmer logo just here in the top left-hand corner. So a pretty simple thing to do, but once again, there are a few key things that you need to know in order to make this possible. If you're enjoying these type of tutorials and you'd like to see more of them, be sure to support our Patreon on patreon.com forward slash the audio programmer. We also have an audio developer community where we all help each other out with problems and questions and become better audio developers and you can find that at the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community and of course be sure to subscribe and like if you're enjoying this tutorial let's get started so here we are in our producer and one of the nice things about the producer is that it has this little feature where we can actually take assets such as these pictures that we want to import and we can actually just drag them into the producer themselves so the way that i like to do this is i like to actually put these in the project that i'm actually working on so here we have our project folder for hello sampler and what i could do is i could just create another folder i'm just going to call this resources and that will be where I'm going to store all of my images and anything else that I'd like to bring into this project. And now I just have my logo. So this is just a .png logo. It's transparent in the background. Uh, so it's just my audio programmer logo. I'm just gonna move it in here to my resources. And there we go. Now I'm just going to take this resources folder and I'm just going to drag it into the producer. And there we go. And now we see that we now have the resources folder in here. And if I click on this resources folder, we will see that inside we have our tap.png and we see that it's checked as a binary resource. So that means that I can access it using this class called binary data. And I will show you just how to do that right now. Now we are in our plugin editor. Remember our plugin editor is where we will be doing all of our UI drawing and I'm in the constructor currently, and what I can do is I can actually just try to access this image. So what I'll do is I'll go to the juice documentation, and the first class that we need to know about for this is called image cache. So we have this method in here where we could actually get a uh, image from memory. And what it takes is a pointer to our image data, and then it asks for the size of that data. Okay, sounds a little bit tricky to, to do, but it's actually quite easy. You just need to know where to get it. So what I could do is I could just say image cache, and then we will get this from memory. And now in order to access that image that we have in our binary resources, what we need to do is we need to call binary data. And then funny enough, all you need to do is just type in uh, TAP. So this is the, the actual resource. And you see here that we have an actual uh, object here that is our PNG. And then you see right above it, we have this uh, const int that tells us what the PNG size is. Okay, so we just need to put that into our data size. So we will call binary data again, and then it's our PNG size, and that will give us back the size. Now, if we go back to our image cache class, we will see that this returns a type image. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. So what we could do is we could just name a variable. We will call this TAP image and we will set it equal to whatever we get back from our, uh, from our image cache when we load that, uh, when we're getting it from our memory. The next thing that we're going to do is find a way to actually put this image on the screen. 
So there's another class that we need to know about to do that, and that's called the image component class. So this works pretty much like a regular component, except we can actually set the image within this component. So what we'll do is we will go to our header and we will create an image component. I'll call this M image component. And then in here, we actually have a method that we could call where we can actually set the image and just put the image in as an argument. It has two different uh, ways that we could call this. We could call it just with the image, or we could use this what's called a rectangle placement. So we'll try that out. So we have this rectangle placement where you could do all types of different modifications on if it's bigger than the actual size, if we want to stretch it or if we want to center it. Uh, so we'll do this one called stretch to fit for this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will say uh, M image component set image. And then we can say tap image and the rectangle placement. We will say stretch to fit. And it's just like that. We will do a little check just to make sure that our image actually uh, actually is valid. So in our image class, we have this uh, is null, which will return true if the image is not valid. So that's a good way for us to check just to make sure this loads okay. So what I could say is if tap image is null, and I will make this a not. So if that comes up as false, then we'll go ahead and we will set the image else. And here we could put a J assert. And what that'll do is that'll, that will pause the program if we actually get to this line of code. And what we could say is that the reason that this has asserted is because our image is null and we want it not to be null. Of course, we want it to be valid. So that's just a little check just to make sure that our image is actually in the right place and that it actually loads correctly. So now from here, it works pretty much like a regular component. So what I could do is I can add and make it visible. And this is the image component. And then down here, we can set the bounds. So set bounds relative. And we will just put this at our origin 0, 0. And let's just set it to uh, 0.25. And let's just try 0.25 again. I forget what I actually made this originally. And we will go ahead and build, and it's built successfully. And then we will go down to our sampler, and we see that it's there. It's a little bit, it's a little bit wonky because it's, it's stretched it. So let's go ahead and just bring the height of it down a little bit, just to make it right. So we will make this 0.15. So actually, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we'll make this 0 0.35 and 0.25. And we will try that again. Let's see what happens. And we see that that's much better. Okay, so that's much more in proportion. So that's that's really it for this tutorial. Uh, so I I hope that this helped you out. If you've ever had any trouble actually getting images into your plugin, that's the Hello World, and there's so many different ways uh, that you can do this and start extending it into the Look and Feel class in order to actually make these buttons uh, your own. And if you have 
images and there's all kinds of complicated stuff that you could do. But this is just something to get you started, just get you into the idea of actually bringing something from the outside into your plugin. And I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.